Hi everybody! I'm back here to talk about how I made Alien Infestation Part 2. Oh, and make sure to stick around so you don't miss my upcoming drama horror short film called Dark Love. If you like my other horror short films, I believe you will like this one too. So to start where I left off in my last video, I wasn't really satisfied with how I ended that story. The short, however, got a lot of views over these years, for which I am very grateful for, by the way. And eventually, I got inspired and motivated to do another one and give myself a chance to end the story in a more satisfying manner. Oh, and spoiler, make sure to watch my shorts before continuing watching this video, okay? The idea. After I finished my alien infestation short, I slowly started to get curious about Simon, whom Amanda finds in a pool of blood in the basement. What's the story about him? What happened to him before he got there? Maybe he left from work one night, comes down into the garage, and once down there, spooky stuff starts to happen, obviously. A lot of you out there seem to enjoy the whole scene with the car sensor and almost every alien movie has a tracking device which is a very clever way to show as little as possible of the monster but still communicating its presence just think about it you feel tension just by watching this small dot on the screen getting closer it's brilliant because imagination will scare you much more than any visuals can show the monster as little as possible is often a guideline in horror films Okay, so what happens to Simon next? Maybe he meets more of these Will and Yutani workers in the basement. After being attacked, he lost a lot of blood, right? But maybe he's still alive. Maybe if Amanda and Simon can make it out the basement together, surviving this whole nightmare. And there it was. My proper ending. She comes down to the basement to save him and they make it out alive together. But to make this work, I knew I had to make a time jump in the script, basically making part two, both a prequel and a sequel, so that I could explore Simon's story in the beginning and also have a continuation and an ending for the entire story at the end of part two. So when all stars aligned in the summer of 2017, I finally made the decision to go ahead and make Alien Infestation part two. Production. For pre-production, I made my previous again with uh, this little guy. Back down in the basement, I went around and started making my pre-visualizations. And I did not do it for the entire movie this time, but only for those segments needing the most attention. I spent a lot of time location scouting my entire basement once again. Really exploring every nook and cranny to find some new and creepy locations. I also found that the basement at my office had potential, with a lot of debris all cluttered around in the hallways, adding to the creepy atmosphere. This also enabled me to use a lot of uh, uh, smoke to make it even more atmospheric. I needed to find an actor to play Simon, and I found Philip Lidigon, and he was up for the challenge. We did a quick screen test, and I knew immediately uh, make this work. We started shooting the first scene in mid-August 2017 and we finished in November. We shot only on weekends and I used a Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K this time. And for all the moving and tracking shots, I decided not to use the dolly cart again, but instead going for a small Panasonic GH5 camera on a gimbal. This allowed me to work much faster and it was a huge relief getting rid of that big old camera dolly. I used my homemade flashing light that I built for the first movie again, uh, but this time around also, I used this. For the last scene where the fire alarm gets triggered, it's a cheap rotating warning light connected to a camera battery. I only had one of these, but with a little bit of movie magic and the editing process, it would seem like the basement are riddled with these warning lights. Production. In the back of my mind, I knew that I could reuse most of the work I already did with the 3D model from the first movie, so there was a pretty good chance I could finish the post-production a lot faster this time around. I've never been so wrong in my entire life. 
Like before, I spent a lot of time animating and lighting the model to make it merge with my footage. In the last scene, there was flashing and moving lights that had to be animated onto the model. And it took a good amount of time. So after a lot of post-production, animating, rendering, compositing, I finally had a finished movie in June 2018. Almost one year later from when I started the whole project, just like my last one. Making movies takes time, man. Who would have known? Lessons learned. I'm actually much more pleased with how part two turned out because it gave me a chance to go in, build upon what I already had created. You know, go in and make stuff a little bit more refined. Of course, there are things I wish I did differently. For example, in the last scene when Amanda comes into the room after fighting off the monster off screen, she should have had a, like a big scar on her face. She should have staggered into the room exhausted. She should maybe have a three big spray cans jerry-rigged together with duct tape to make her more of a dangerous threat to the monster. But yeah, on set you're always fighting against time and sometimes you just gotta keep going and sacrifice some things to make sure you actually get all the shots you need for the movie. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video and if you like my content please like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions about these movies I made, I will be happy to answer you in the comment section. So I will do my absolute best to answer every one of you. Next up on my channel will be the release of my new original horror drama short called Dark Love. So stick around and I'll see you later. Bye! Du, I can't talk so long until for my mobile telephone. Fuck. Ta om den. Du är där. Ja. <laughs> Skit på, tack. Kör du. Upp. Tacka, tacka, tacka. Bra. Bra, inte bra. Ja, vad sy. Ja, sorry. <laughs> en minut. Ja, Johan. Vad sa du? Ja, klart. Se jag någon råtta så kan jag hojta till. Ja. Ja, ja. Okej, det är uppfattat. Vad är det som händer? Jag tar det härifrån nu. Ett utsättning. Okej, det är uppfattat. Ja, sorry. Kom. <laughs> Se jag någon råtta så kan jag hojta till. Ja, ja. 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 Sir, you think you had the time to talk about our queen and savior, my mom? No? You want me to bring you an egg? Easter's coming up. No? Are you sure? Okay, bye then. <laughs>